almost. It's going to be five minutes to nine here in one second. So boom. Five minutes to nine. We're short the euro. I'm preparing to buy into that blue box for the next eight hours. I extended the. It's the trusty uh, one hour chart. So we can always trust this chart to give us accurate info. This is the half hour. And we can run them side by side in here. Another little trick you can do is to be one beat ahead. Just one beat ahead. I don't have to outrun you. I, have to out, I, have to, I just have to outrun you. I don't have to outrun the bears. So the price pulse here, we can switch this and we don't get too carried away, but the 15 is compatible with the one hour. And I don't think you need much more. There's nothing magical what's going on here. You know, the buyers are coming in on the 15, but then the one hour is starting to roll over and it's like, okay, if they buy here, uh, would you sell it if it came to, say, the guy that was asking me about the Bitcoin trade? It's like, you know, you just you just pick a spot. And you, I just start loading. You know, I can't, like, if I'm going to sell this thing, I'm selling from here. And then when it gets up here, I'm like, honey, get the credit card out. This is going to be a great trade. Wait till you see this trade. <laughs> I know. I know I can't believe this is going to happen, but the market's going to come down here out of nowhere. And it's going to swoop down and it's going to take out the low of the previous day. Just like it took out the low of the previous day before. So anybody seeing a pattern here? Now, you don't have to take an ICT class to see how every time it takes in, just a little bit in, 20 pips in, this is a 20 pip grid, a little bit less. You notice how at the end of the day, you know, just, and then a little bit lower into the next day, notice this uh, subtle situation. You take out the low of the day, then you go a little, a little bit lower, just a little bit lower into the next session. Even this one, I'm going to... I'm going to say this is one of those obvious, uh, just a little bit lower. Like this one's a little bit lower by X. It's very obvious. It's very obvious, I hope. Okay, I'm going to take a very broad approach to here to the drawing tools. I'm going to paint with a broad brush now. Take this low out by about 10 pips here. First at first um, bounce, still under the floor, closing floor at least. Then one little, little bit lower. So this is the same thing. A little bit lower. Here it's just, oh man, like huge, huge pressure, right? Huge pressure. A lot of vacuum is forming above here. So for me, like the... Uh, fast hard down fast hard up because it's it's just like you can't keep this thing down you just can't hold this thing under pressure look how insane this run is i can't even get, get over it really some of these moves are just incredible this thing stalls out up here i mean this is a hard up move this is a hard down move it, this this is fucking crazy then no robot can withstand after that you mean to tell me your robot's going to adjust its shit to come in here and try to it's now it's going to trade super heavy on half million dollar positions and make the same amount of money it would have made if it scaled into like um 20k up here so you're risking about 300 bucks to make what um 600 800 bucks if you martingale into the top of that, actually, if you scale to the top and you hold the whole thing and dump right here, like you knew it was coming back here, you don't know, but there's always a possibility that you're going to make just a little bit lower and the same thing on the top side, a little bit higher, and then, and then bam, right? And then bam. So we're waiting for 9 o'clock. And I'm gonna, I'm short right now. And I'm looking for it to smash down and start to fill up my 
limits orders, which I put in logarithmically in a Fibonacci-esque stack. So there's a harmonic here, a big fat. Uh, I try to start them overlayered by at least five pips. So we have these deep banks currently short for the next five minutes. I'm looking for it to slam down. And then I'm looking for it to start filling up my, my buy tickets. This is my plan. This is how I do it. Most efficient thing I can think of short into my longs. So I had to, to sell, I had to um, change my mind about um, the, the rhythm. It's like if you upstrummed every guitar chord, you know, it's awkward. So unless you're used to that kind of thing, you, you really have a, uh, it's awkward. It's like a hi-hat, you know, you, you let off and it's louder. Uh, with a kick drum, when you kick it, it's louder. So we're just waiting for a crush of five minutes down. Hit my, start hitting my buy limits. Total auctions going on, psycho auctions going on here at the end of the end of the month here. Just crazy shit, wackadoodle shit. Kind of predictable that the it's still violent, it's still a violent market. Five minute crush down. It's going to put us in the premium category. So we'll be uh, about 22 pips profit, actually. So we're about, about just a couple pips from getting filled here. And then we start picking up the long side of this thing because we figure the overreaction is going to be pretty harsh, you know. I mean, the market has to get back to the middle of the road. And on the way to the middle of the road, I'm going to start stacking the buy limits in here. And the short expiration stuff is going to be really close to the market. It's going to be in a little box here. That way, um, let me do the dual view. So we'll look at these charts uh, vertically. So here's the 15 crushing. And the, and this is a more obvious um, slot is that as soon as it comes down here, the buyers are going to come in, right? They're going to come in heavy here. And Martin Gale in so that their heaviest tickets start right here where a top became a bottom uh, many day, many, or maybe two hours ago or something, an hour ago, right here. So this was the big, here's the big takeoff point. So really want to put your biggest tickets here. Maybe this is some 618 bullshit. But right here, you know, you really want to, so get in 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K. So it's, it's not, it's not that you're, Martingaling, it's how big, right? And and save a lot of money for below here, below the round number, right? That's going to be the other trick. So just about to get taken out here, crushing down in. Kind of kind of want to buy it back right now. I'm sure right now. I'm kind of tempted to get out, but I really should wait till two minutes go by. I really should wait till 9:30. So I'll wait till 9:30. So this is the hardest thing I think about the trading thing is, is that, um, you know, it's never the right amount of money for the, you know, it's never, uh, some of the biggest trades are very hard to load the wagon because, uh, you entering a 40 pip range to make 120 pips, or are you any entering a 10 pip range to make 20 pips? And in these slots that exist, so it took out the high of yesterday. So the ICT people would understand this. Here's the high of the uh, day. This is like an inverted, this is the top wick of an inverted hammer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, once you go above this, so this is the high of the previous day too. We are actually scalped to this level. If we sell above, we have to scalp to here for our first take profit. And our second is going to be the crush down here. So we're going to ride the storm out now. Looking for that to smash down for the next one minute. We've got one minute left. So five minutes after nine. So we're starting nine and all the five minute, uh, all the 15 minute bots are climbing out of this or people that, uh, so they kind of just stop hunted this guy, right? The, the, the guy who's long, 
Where's his stop? And the trap is happening right up on the top. You get this nice failure swing, which you don't see on the one hour chart. It's just that climax here, right? So identify what, you know, what lives inside that wick is this, because it just so happens that it, you know, climax, you can't see it on the, it's hidden on that. It just looks like an inverted hammer, you know, because it came down. So now we're looking for heavy buyers here based on this shelf. And then here's the wedge, serious buyers down to the round number. No problem, right? Obviously. So it's just having the right position sizes at this point. You know. And having the patience to wait for these fucking trades is ridiculous. If you waited all week for, say, this trade, you know, that's that's some waiting. So on the four hour, it just looks pretty, uh, pretty obvious. Every time you get uh, lower than this wick, heavy buyers come in and they're able to engulf this fucker all the way took out this high so the, the problem with it is is that this trade is the same pattern as this trade but this trade cost a lot less money than this trade on top right uh, this but this is 40 pip window so that's a lot of you know golly you know okay so it's uh, 905 and the buyers came in here on the five minute chart. So we got to go to the five now. Oh, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll go side by side on the, the, so this vertical view, so the 15, the buyers came in, but are the sellers gonna, so is this the breakout confirmation then tank? I like to put the five on the right. It's like the leading edge. So you get five, five minute chart um, into the, say half hour chart right so that's the scalpers to light now the one hour chart shows us that we're still in profits um underneath the high of the previous day high of the previous day and we're going to put this a little more intense line green so that is the still in profits there so if you have patience and you're waiting for the other shoe to drop so to speak on the five it's going to look like this you have to stall out here somewhere this bottom has to become a top it's like a micro trend here the stairway to hell micro trend bottom becomes a top and in a also it's happening in a cycle of length of like this on this side, the one hour story is that, you know, you're short, hopefully you scalped to here, that you sold up in this place, you um, were able to, let's see, if you sold above that, that's about a 30 pip sell window. But if you if you martingale into that, like you uh, really scale into that hard, then every ticket's a winner, and it's just a, a range of money at that point. Is it three hundred? Is it five thousand? What is the number? How many tickets do you stack into this window? Well, how big is the account? How much do you like the risk? You know, those kind of things. You want to risk 200 bucks. 200 bucks, uh, that's 200 tickets. I mean, it's hard to fuck that up, but you don't put all the tickets on the same price. This is the thing about diversification, you know. I guess that's a big deal. They hire you for that. He's very diversified. He'd be buying and selling. He's just like whacking it. It's very hard to, I think if you... Um, You have to see the seller's side. So the bias is, I think, uh, every five minutes, 
the five minute chart has a trend and the big picture on the one hour side whatever you put on the left side here is going to be the big wave you know the the major structures they may only fill uh, once a day at the end of the day or the beginning of the next day coming into Asia you're like okay well could we go up or down from here and maybe you want to pick the bias right there at the end of the day but you know <laughs> if I've been a chart your bias is constantly going yeah okay well I can see it looks like a failure rally here we got about um, well it's 10 minutes so we just updated that chart if we fall down here it's a confirmation entry we, we smacked into the yellow line on the five minute chart and we sold at the market now the next five minutes will go by and we're still here you might sell another one and what if it goes up maybe you want to sell that maybe you're just going to have sell limits laid all the way up into the top of here which is what I currently have so um, and of course it's Wednesday tomorrow's Thursday this is a wackadoodle price we can always watch the five minute chart and we can go to the four hour chart the daily chart now look at the daily chart this is an incredible amount of pips here as soon as the market starts closing this is for people that want to trade like once a week as soon as it starts closing below here you know who's not buying that so if you put your tickets you buy a 100 pip window and you're gonna buy a 1k the first 20 pips down now this is an ideal I'm actually gonna price fit this to the total concept of scaling in and the deeper it goes the more you have to buy which is very difficult psychologically because um, you're kind of married to the it's not a bias it's like a wedding it's like you're married to the idea of short or, or going long and you kind of have to be ready to take the nest T plunge and it entails putting in the big tickets are going to be the, the old prices the old lows back here and if you commit to a, a 60 pip window I guarantee you um, you could make if you could risk a 40 pip window you can make 80 pips so it's double your money it's not uh, 618 your money 61 it could be that too you could have a whole layer uh, scheme in there you could have everything in there actually so I think I'm gonna have to take off one of these tickets it looks like they're gonna overfill me so I'm gonna pluck off a ticket it looks like we're gonna come down hard and that's another thing what does it look like you know so I would take off those tickets now I'm actually gonna start buying right here there's no doubt about it for the next hour for the next eight hours I put eight hour tickets in right here in these slots and these are bad ratio entries so what's going to happen is we're going to get filled here and it's going to smack up filled here and it's going to smack up filled here I'm going to scalp that so I put in a a series of scalps now if they blow the scalps out I got it I'm buying this whole fucking area down here so the way I look at it, this is this is like critical warfare <laughs> like if you want to make money you got to just put those tickets in now today it doesn't look like much of this chart but look look at the if you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a real serious swing trader like you're gonna say you know what <laughs> I take no fucking prisoners every fucking day I, I put tickets in that last a month now you can put a one month expiration on these tickets so in case you fucking croak in the middle of the night because you made too much money um, but uh, you know you want to have it so that 
you know, you don't have ex you want those things to expire. It's just too much exposure. All right, we're looking to cash out again. I said that again. So the sellers did come in there like clockwork on that five, and there was you kind of had a sell right here on limits, right? Now we're looking to crush here. We want to buy here, 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 just all the way back down, and then bounce, dead cat bounce. We're gonna put the dead pit, cat bounce scalps in, and we got the big fucking fuck you in the ass. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is the kind of this trading style coming in hard on all these tickets there's a big hot spot here here's a congestion here's no tickets so very very rarely is there no tickets i'm a big fan of just getting out so we come smashing back to the floor we're cashing out cashing out autofill autofill out autofill in i just clipped up some of the tick now i feel like getting out so I'll get my finger on the trigger. Now it is 15 minute chart. So I think I'm going to scalp out of that. So I'm going to go flat on that trade. I'm sitting with limits now. And now I'm going to put sell limits above me. And I'm going to re-rack the sell side. Which is really bad ratios you know I can't stress enough how you need some really shitty tickets like let me pick one out here so you risk 22 pips to make 12 for four hours now this is going to be a, a 6k I'm going to start right at the top of that last known supply zone and now I'm just going to I'm just going to double stack that I don't expect them to fill it but you know how these markets are you know how that's that could actually be a real good trade there. All right, now we're looking at we're looking to sell this rally, and on it goes on and on, just on and on. But you, if you can execute, which I just did, I cleared off tickets, and I'm ready for the next round of bullshit. I'm short just one position now. This drama goes on and on. That was kind of a long wait for me. That's pretty tough. You know, I'd like to buy, get out here, and then uh, re-rack and go take a nap. The other thing is the buy side. I'm going to throw the buy limits in down here to show you. If this is a ticket that lasted, so in the daily charts, like that trade's over daily and you can keep switching time frames but don't go you don't have to go carried away here so this is the half hour view we're going to resell this if it goes up actually i feel like my bias is i believe in both sides of the market we, we should never take a side there so it's going back up we should just be flexible okay so i got out on the 15 based on that moment I'd rather resell it here in a really uh, easygoing, obvious. Another Here's another bad ratio. Risk 20 to make 10 pips. That's kind of end of the world stop. Now you can stack up a dense pack up here, and I'll put a good, couple good ratios up here. Risk them. Um, Oh God, here. 18 to make 36 is pretty damn good, but you would have had to put this one up high. So if you get this thrust up and it comes back, so just imagine all the scenarios up here. Anything above here, if it comes to here, there's going to be sellers. I'm, I'm counting on it. But my stop is, well, my stops are lit, are uh, staggered. All my entries are staggered. There's not much duplication here. We can put a 10K in in a one pip range. So this could be a, like you could put a standard lot easily here and you could have scalps built in and then have outlandish targets. And here's you're gonna be a stop is hopefully gonna be more like this. So the ratios are gonna be good and your targets are gonna be like this.
And then the 15, you know, come on. We're waiting for this thing to come down and crush here tonight or crush up. Drift up. I'll sell it again. It's too much fun, really. But you, you really have to lay the track in and just accept the risk. I guess I'm so used to buying. And, and both sides, um, I don't know if it moves faster in one direction, but both sides seem to be pretty brutal once it gets going in one direction. On the one-hour chart, let me zoom it out to give it some drama here. So I'll zoom out a little bit on the, um, let me clear off these objects. Okay, so now it looks like it's fatal, like it's going to pull back deep. But I'm willing to buy that whole plunge because it's the pace that it's going to plunge at. So my tickets are going to expire right about here. And by the time we get to here tonight, My four-hour ticket is probably be gone by here. So what's what's the trajectory? If you think we're gonna, if you think this is the the uh, deepest low, which it is, we get a reaction like this, and then it's gonna go down lower, or it's going to come into this and it's gonna weasel away and take off. And maybe up here, we'd be selling into that tomorrow for sure. Like that goes without saying. I'm always putting orders above and below. So sells here and buys here. It's stupid. Buy, buy, buy more. Right? Pretty pretty tough to do, but you got to do it. If you want to make, if you're going to buy a 1K, a 2K, a 3K, now you're in 6K. And you're going to buy a 4K. You're in 7K. See, adding the ticket one more size above every time. And then, lo and behold, we're stuck under the floor. We bounce off of it at the 20, come back, pause. Now, if you're here to see this, and you know what you're looking at, like these are just incredible moves. If you know what you're looking at, you know what to do. Here, I'm just going to say, you know what, let's just buy in limits. All the, I, I just don't care. It's going to be eight, it, until Europe opens. Now, when Europe opens, we could be below here, any amount, and now I'm going to trade big tickets. So if you trade ferociously here and make uh, yourself 40 pips, say you just made four grand or 400 bucks here, you can come back, you can cash out anything above here because you know the sellers are coming in, right? I mean, you have to be crazy not to get out of that thing. And so the revolving door of trading is what it really is. If you're going to be a buyer and a seller, it shouldn't be that hard. We're going to sell in a big spread out kind of don't stress out the account trade. If we're going to go full on, and if you've been trading long enough, you know when to fucking go hog long. When you get down here and start probing the low of the previous low of the day, and here you took out the high of the day and just go ripping down. So you take out the high of the day and all the sellers above the this whole pocket, this whole vacuum fills up. Just like this whole vacuum filled up. And now you think it's not going to... Of course, now it's going to go the other way. The yin and the yang. It, it's filling the void. And we just got done filling this void. So that's satisfied. Now we will go after this, this new... Uh, compression here. The markets uh, kind of wants to, in other words, there's a void up here. It's going to probe it. It seems to be always going after these voids. But here, the, the, the trailing stop bots finally get stopped out on that move. That's a very clean move. You know, there's not a lot of clean moves like that. We're always, we always wish the market was this fast, but this is a little easy to trade. Now that you've had this climax, it's kind of easy, you know. There's, it's not like a frantic, um, and they popped the cork there, you know. We, we knew we knew what was going to happen, right? Fundamentally, we knew that interest rates, let's talk about it on the monthlies. Oh, yeah, they're going to keep raising. <laughs> no, 
now the Europeans are going to raise their interest rates or they could just, you know, it's just nothing but another echo, you know. It's just another echo. So we have these constant echoes. And uh, it's also the wealth effect. When, when oil went down, you know, what, what things stayed the same? And some of this stuff is funny because lumber um, came all the way back to earth. People are like, yeah, I guess lumber's really not worth it. Just like, yeah, and the order imbalances that happen with the, uh, you know what a supply chain is, don't you? But the, these order imbalances is what it is. And now you got Overstock. Remember Overstock.com? I mean, is this stuff a secret? People don't, don't know what's going on here. So I'm selling into that. In a, in a lazy grid. And I'm looking for it to just, they're going to go, there comes the buyers again. But I hate to chase it. I want to enter on limits. Like, yeah, I guess I could have dumped that. I, I dumped my short, which that means I went long. But uh, I'm up for the casual trade and the intense trade. It's coming up on 9.30. This will be the failure swing uh, sells. I'm counting on it going up. Yeah, I'm counting on um, having a uh, sequence, like having a series of entries that I think it's a four-hour expiration. I just put on these tickets, so that'll take us to around just before Europe opens. At 2 o'clock in the morning, we could be taking out the high here. But I just don't want to, I, I don't want to miss out on it. So I'm going to start selling early for about 20K here. And I got another um, 70K up on top. Comes up into that. And we take all that in with a 22 pip stop. So I, I I get if it goes up forty pips right now. It's gonna blow out these first tickets, but there'll be enough money to really load up on the top of this thing. So I don't have a uh, having a bias is just ridiculous in in the, this kind of trading where you're just trading from zone to zone of these shelves of these voids of these crazy prices, you know. And it's just spectacularly uh, outrageous what an auction looks like on a chart. Just looks like a mess. That's why I like the line chart because people said it looks ugly. I'm like, yeah, because it is. It's just a mess. <laughs> it looks like somebody scribbling on the screen. But, you know, um, the market gets there quick. And the market gets there slow. When people step in and, uh, well, all the tickets are stacked up in there. And it's, it doesn't seem to have a time. Like the market can go fast move, slow move. And it's just like the dynamic range is huge. It's like going from, if you're in a car going 10 miles an hour, it's like you can, all of a sudden you're doing like 800 miles an hour and then you slam on the brakes, you know. And then you drive around town at 30 miles an hour for a couple of days. And then one day you just punch it and you're off. And it's very disturbing. Like you couldn't really teach somebody to drive like that. What I want you to do now is... Drive like a limo driver, very slow. I want you to drive like you're in NASCAR. What? Yeah, son. We want you to do 140 miles an hour. I was watching these cop chases. They go 150 at night. I mean, come on, man. That's crazy. So I'm slightly short again. I still have my buy limit plan below me. So if we grab these sellers here, and now we're going to rip down, I'm good with that. If we keep drifting up, I'm good with that. So I'm good with everything. It's all about the order placement 
and the arrays and how many tickets you put in. It's all about that. And you have scenarios in your head, you know, looks like we're going to tank. The, I mean, by the time Europe open, we'll probably be um, coming into, uh, I mean, from here all the way down and seriously down in here, it's going to be a buyer's delight for easy plunge and rip. So the plunge and rip technique that the market's uh, kind of doing, you know, without uh, effortlessly doing, it's crazy, right? But it's going to plunge into these zones. And as long as you set your tickets in, you're going to pick up these trades. This is block uh, trades. The trades of uh, ticket stacks in here. It's the only practical way to trade the markets. This kid responded to my video that I talked about placing your tickets in and walking away. He says, well, I can't do that because I can't do the intraday trading. Well, it's ridiculous. Sure, you can't do that. But he's an ICT student. He's probably looking for that bullshit gap order block refill bullshit. I mean, that's complete harebrained bullshit. I could say that I'm, I've got filled here. I could sell. I'm selling, selling right at the market now because I see this. Um, dude, I'm already short. It went up, so I sold. Yeah, I'd love to see ICT getting filled down here. He's sitting here babysitting this fucking move, and then he's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to get in right down here. Got the 15 here. I can see now if he did have it, if he had half a brain, he would say, you know what? I noticed that I should start buying right in here for 20 pips. Why, why, why does this guy not just go, you know what? You do. You just buy right in here. Now he's got this big mystic thing. Well, you look at the weeklies and the dailies and the. Why do you look at the weeklies? Oh, I got it. Yeah, no, it's fun to predict stuff for the next five months. But, dude, are you really waiting five months for a fill? Like, no, nah, you're kidding, right? No, you're joking. Oh, fuck. Here, look at the four-hour. So four-hour four says we're drifting up. Maybe one last punch left in this puppy. Let's see if I can get a better view. I'm sure it's possible. Four hour chart needs big bars. So that's the four hour, that's the beginning of the week. This Monday, you spike up, you rip all the way back. It's just unbelievable. But the one hour here, so we can get a, a perspective. So this would be a four to one ratio, four to one zoom. Let me pick out the same price zones. So these are all those new lows, just like that. So it looks it looks different here, but now it makes sense, right? As far as the a giant fill, everything below this wick on the four hour, structurally speaking, you come down eighty fucking pips below that. Boom! There's twenty every handle, and every time you step down, look at the response. That is fucking crazy. <laughs> You got a 30 pip stop on here and you made a hundred pips. I'm presupposing that you held on until it started taking out the high of the previous week. For God's sakes. Now we're drifting up. I'm selling into this. I'm going to keep dropping my sell tickets just like this. We come up here and we grab a rack one hour expirations come up here in one hour we start selling we cash out into the top of that wick and that's the trade that is the trade sean then it's the one hour that's the fucking four hour you can't fuck this up that is a 20 pip grid you fucking sell above this and you fucking buy below here it is so stupid buy below here you sell above here. Every time there's a new high, you sell above this high 
and you sell above this high, this new highs, it's tough, but you got to sell into that. And then you're going to buy into all these plunges. So you're going to buy this one. And you're just going to go back and forth and make money, basically. Start buying here. Start buying there. Buy a pant load here. And when it comes ripping back to here, you're going to cash out. You're going to cash out. And I would start going short here. Um, if I bought here, I'd probably cash out here all along the way. So I take my first 20, I take my my 40, and take my 60 pips. I'm probably out of that trade. Um, and maybe I sell here, and I only made about 20 pips there, and then I sell again. So I only did this trade, and this was like, okay, looks like we're going to go higher. So now I feel like build a big position up here, comes down here. That's 40 pips. That's that's good money. I'll do that trade. Or I'm sure I'm slightly short. Come down, and the big money's going to be the smart money's going to be down here. Come back to this top. Fibonacci's all over the fucking place down here. Got fucking Gartley's. Got all sorts. So all that shit is is a reason to trade. So it's like, oh, I got this man. I got that. I got a barbecue man. Let's 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 get some meat cooking on this barbecue here. Like, what else you got? Well, I got a bunch of other really unhealthy food we could eat. Break it out, dude. Fuck. So, you know, trading should be fun. It's like a fucking barbecue, you know. I can see both trades here. I can see the bulls trade and the bears trade. I got no bias. I mean, I got no, I got no uh, uh, the skin in the game. Uh, so mentally. To be objective and stand back and watch your car get crashed is pretty tough. So if you have a new car, and if you have a brand new account, you just put a hundred bucks in or a thousand because you're like, I blew up my last account. It's crazy. Like the market, just, yeah. If if you don't have stops in the market or you have too many tickets in, stops or no stops, what's the rate of change on some of these moves? I mean, my God, you're just fucking. Wow, I just made a bunch of money. That's crazy. Like. This looks like it just broke out. I think I'm just going to stay in this trade. <laughs> no, you're not. Like, if you put a 10 pip stop on that, okay, you lost 10 pips, but it, it was up 90 pips and it came all the way back to your stop. Like, what the fuck was that? Like, at the end of the day, it's like up you bought. So you're like, oh, I got confirmation of that too. I bought there. I broke out. Look at well, it's just coming back up, up and down and up. And it just keeps on, in a sense, hunting down your original stop. It's retesting that area. It's nothing personal. And all of this, um, now here's a, a nice clean run. Look at look at the, 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 so bold. This run is just so crazy good. Um, it's such a sharp move. There's not one hesitation in this move. Four hours straight up, and now it's just insane, Bill. Insane. Like, there's no fucking... That is crazy, but in the same fractal sense, this is a clean move, and then it's just... Eh, it'll be bullshit tonight. The big money's going to be buying in here. That's a smart money down there. Real smart money. I mean, people people that trade down here are so smart. You don't even know they're down there trading. They be hiding their tickets and everything. Yeah, that's right. They hide their ticket. They start spoofing the markets. I can't. Why well, people talk like that, dude? Just go to a retail um, <clears throat> broker and just. They don't. Nobody. Well, your ticket doesn't go to the real market. <laughs> well, that's the whole point, dumbass. We don't want my tickets going to the fucking. Well, they can see all the tickets. It's it's, 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 it's footprint. It's, it's, it's the footprint, you know. That's why I try to use market depth. I can see my neighbor's barbecue from here. I'm betting he's gonna burn himself up. He's drunk tonight. Oh, you got the same bet I got on. I know. I saw your bet. <laughs> It's complete transparency here, unless you're an ETF, a Bitcoin operation. And then, of course, <laughs> then you know how that goes. 
Okay, looks like we're going to drip down here. Coming into my preferred trade is to buy the plunge here. I just love buying. I'm sure I could be short. Even if I was short on this trade here, I would have cashed out. I'm sure here I'm cashing out, and this is supposed to be the top that becomes a bottom as you come back, and it just it just ignores it. See you, buy. I don't even fucking know who you are. There is no so-called loyalty to the friendly tr trend. This doesn't exist. I prefer it to be a complete misfortune. Everybody's buying. Things are hopeful. We got a trend line. Trend line should hold. We're in this channel. And then kaboom. Oof, what the fuck was that? I don't even know. I was out of control. Like, that is ridiculous. What in the fuck? They're manipulating the market again. So buy here, buy here. So this is a 40 pip, 60 pip window. And they just buy, buy, buy. Buy big, big, big. And then scalp that big thing. If you're afraid, scalp the big to the floor. And let the rest go. Right? Scalp big, ride a small position. You can't fucking believe it. But nothing more satisfying than some of these moves. They're just completely like the news came out. Now, this was bid down into the uh, news, so to speak. It doesn't matter. I don't even... <sighs> Something's going on, right? If you know the news is coming out, the market will move into the news and then move away from it in the other direction sometimes because people are unraveling into the news thinking, oh, it's going to be bad news. Oh. And then uh, anything's possible, but the moves are so huge, most people don't have targets set for 80 pips if they're used to using 40 pip targets. You know, the scale of the market is so huge in some of these markets, like you're going to trade some of these instruments, they, they fucking move 200 pips a day. <laughs> So you you need a tiny account if you're going to trade in the same kind of ticket amounts, you know. And this is it, you know. It's just at the gas station. And this guy was counting change. Dude, he had pennies out, nickels. I was like, oh, my God. I almost wanted to say to him, are they still making them coins, damn it? Those Bitcoins, son? Like, I haven't had change in my pocket. I don't even know. I think I have some change laying around. I'm like, it's, it's like, what in the fuck is this shit? Oh my God. I got to count that. First thing I'm thinking is I got to count that up just to buy like half of a fucking, I don't, what can I buy for under a buck? The dime store is gone. They should just get rid of this coins and what the fuck? If the government stopped printing these coins. We'd have more money. Anyways, that's my two cents. We're sitting here. We're sitting here waiting for the market to tank into my gen genius buy limit pack. She has to drop 20 pips. On the way to here, I want a dead cat bounce out of it, and then I want to load the wagon down here like you never seen before. Just, I'm just going to load the wagon. And then I'm going to take my 40 pips. I'm going to redump it and buy again. And the market's probably going to settle back here in the middle of all this bullshit. By Friday, we'll probably be sitting here uh, in the middle of the road, some dumb shit. And then we, we have to wait for the pressure to build up again. And wait for the whole dam to break and all the hopes and dreams and all the trend traders getting their heart broke. Oh, gee, guys. You range traders ruined all our fun. We had a good fucking trend here. I was short right here. I went short. And everything was good. And Jake told me, yeah, I went short here. I too, I got another confirmation to go even shorter than you went. Good trade, son. And then some goober had his sell stop. And here he goes, yeah, I got picked up on his stop. I had a stop here. went short. And I had a protector stop. Gave market a lot of room. And then it came down lower here, and I didn't get out, and it just came ripped me fucking face off. In fact, I put in a, I gave the market a lot of room on that one. So what I did was I went short. Let me show you what I did. I took a class on trading once, and the instructor told me, well, what you want to do is first get a bias here, and then you want to find a setup. Well, just trade the setup, dude. <laughs> 
Fuck the bias. Just try the setup. The failure of it. Either truth or either way, whatever happens. But I, I put myself stop in here, and Jake said, "You know, give this market some room." So instead of putting my stop here, I thought, "What the fuck?" He's right. I put my stop way the fuck up here, and I said, "You know what? Give this market some." So I got in here, went short, got confirmation. You can see it's rolling over. The ABC wave shit here. So when it broke out, I said to him, "This for our chart." I said to him, "Dude, I think it's going down." And sure enough, um. Sure enough, it went down, but there was a little problem because it kind of went back up. How's that? Well, when it went short here, you know, um, this stop worked out great, you know, and uh, so I got confirmation, got a little nervous, went against me. But then it came down, and I was up like 10 fucking 20 pips here, 30 pips, and I said, damn, that that is, that is a good that is a good trade. And it looks like we're going to break down. We're going to fill this vacuum down here. I heard some guy talking about vacuums. He was going to crush down in here. Yep. <sighs> Motherfucker. At the end of the day, this thing came fucking ripping back up here. And goddamn stopped me the fuck out. And after that, I said, I don't know if I can do this this trading thing <laughs> I just lost a lot of money on this confirmation idea and they told me you should check with your local veterinarian see if she's got any bugs or something on her <laughs> she's kind of trampy she's a hot tramp but I love her so so baby baby come back <laughs> it's not that bad come on we we could be able to we can rebuild this account. No, there's plenty of good trades in there. So a lot of this stuff, you know, you probably don't even want to babysit this trade. That's why I recommend sell every 20 pips. I think starting, you know, how to start, how to start trading Forex is, it's, it goes with something like this. Put in an eight hour tickets. Just put them on the 20 pip handles and sit back because this trade here, if you had at any point along here, and the market has to be up here, somewhere above here for you to place a limit. As soon as the market gets up here, well, you got limits sitting here, right? So you would have picked up a 3K if you got a linear grid here. Oh, well, you're long 3K. Comes ripping back here, you could dump the whole thing. Or it rips to here, you dump the whole thing. Or are you really sitting around for this? Maybe you are. Maybe you set tickets in for that. It's completely possible. And you'd have to rinse and repeat these trades. To make consistent money from this strategy of just buy, sell high, buy low, buy low, sell high. There's 40 pips, 40 pips, 40 pips. You may not experience this whole trade. You may just have a 20 pip window you buy and you're looking to make 40 pips. 30 pip window to make 30 pips. 30 pip window to make 60 pips and on and on. Here's all the tickets. Here's a, here's a 3K. 20 pip spread. 20 pip grid. There's a 20 pip grid. So you got you got um, 3K sitting here. You're risking $9 to make $12. You got a 30 pip stop to make 40 pips so this is roughly 9 to make 12 12 to make 18 dollars 12 to make 24 these are 20 pip areas 3k so you're gonna a ticket here a ticket here and a ticket here it's a linear grid so it's boom 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 if you place it like that you can place them here same thing so i like to put them in tight a tight pack so I put two power packs up here comes up hits that ricochet ding ping bong but you don't care what the fuck you care the only thing that matters is when you go to sleep if you're gonna sleep for four hours take a nap but if we put an aggressive four hour ticket so right now I put two hour aggressive tickets in here four hour down here eight hour twelve hour gonna extend you way out here but I probably never gonna do that because I'll be here 
eight hours. Boom. It's just easy to think about it. Here's a four-hour chart, so uh, there's not much drama left, right? Comes down a little bit, goes up a little bit. Eh, it's noisy, but we can make money here, and this is how it is. Now, the, the jobs report's going to come out, which is going to probably, at some point, if we're near the tops here, we're probably going to try to go after this um, high, which is 40 pips away. And I'm not going to start selling here. I'm going to sell on the way to that, and I'm going to sell very heavy up here. So I'm going to sell heavy on the top and sell light on the way to the top. But when I get to that top, I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> really? It's like these people on the highway, dude. I got this motherfucker in a goddamn truck. What is this, fucking a horror movie? Motherfucker's got fog lamps on the bottom cranked up some kind of what 8000 k shit dude save it i would have what i'm gonna get is a fucking mirror that's a robotic mirror that's gonna find those headlights and it's gonna fucking condense it a little bit it's gonna be a little concaved uh mirror and it's gonna shoot them back into your fucking retinas okay you got to wear welding goggles when you drive your fucking car behind me so stop with the fucking what the fuck, dude? It's not even foggy out. Besides, are you supposed to use amber on the fog or something? Get something that looks pretty, that blue shit. But you got fucking, like, daylight coming out of the bottom of your... What the fuck is that? My retina's is fucking smoldering. And then you're tailgating me. Dude, I already gave made a lane change. Get the fuck out of here. I need a fucking Yosemite Sam with real guns out the back. Like throwing fucking grapes at this cunt. Splatters windshield with eggs or some shit. All right, we're drifting down. It looks bo pretty boring tonight. I wish it was more exciting, but it's not. <sighs> the stairway to hell, the stairway to heaven. But the, the thing is, it's a mess. The market's a mess. This data looks bizarre. Here's the one hour with the four hour. And now you can see all the little double bottoms that live in the single. Here's a double bottom, very profound double bottom on the four hour. But that's actually a, um, a triple bottom here. So if I see, see the correlation, this triple bottom is this. So this is very obvious stuff. You just have to place the tickets there. And you could have scalped some of that. And you could, a trend trader could have bought here and here and here, but the trend trader would have got his ass crushed by this. The guy that has a bias, oh, looks like it's going up. Yeah. Um, looks like it's going to go up there. And here it looks like it's doomed. It looks like it's going to drip down. So I'll take these dead cap bounces, high probability dead cap bounces all day long. Buy here, dump, buy, dump, buy, dump. And if the account, so as it's coming down, but I'm going to be buying for the long term of this move because I perceive that the market's capable. Just look at any four-hour chart of like three months of data, and you're going to see shit like this and wonder, what in the flying fuck is that? And can I sell the top of that? And can I buy the bottom of that? Can I range trade this in some way? And this would have taken some patience, trust me. This is fucking eight, this is one day up. Without looking back. Pretty pretty insane. Well, this is only uh, eight hours up. Eight hours down. Just insane. That. come down into my buy limits here get this trade and whatever we can trade you know whatever kind of trades we got I'm a seller here and I'm gonna buy here right. out in the time we could project the envelope into the space out from the market just get right out there and by the end of the day you know and then they got Friday Here's Friday. 
Friday is at the end of the road for the week. It's the new month tomorrow. So this will be Friday. Of course, Meta Trader's not painting out that far, but we know this is Friday's close. Can we get to what price by um, tomorrow night? So if this is Asia, which it is, this is 10, we have Europe's going to open. Are we going to go up or are we going down? So typically there's a sell-off, but there's always a sell-off of some degree. So the matter of degree is a problem, always. Is this going to sell off, drift down, kind of just mess around and fall down into some nonsense here? And it's just going to be like, well, we can make 20 and 40 pips here on these swings. It's just going to just weasel up here and do the same kind of nonsense. Well, we can make 40 to 60 pips up here and kind of whatever happens. So I'm betting on I'm a seller above that. I'm a buyer below that. So all my trades are about 20 pips away from me currently. And should I cash out what I'm in now? Or does it matter? There's how much pain? There's less pain if it's incremental. It's just cushion here. And these are realistic trade time horizons. Every day at 8 in the morning, every day at 8 at night, every day at 2 in the morning. If you could drop the 4 hours, if you drop them at 6 a.m., by 10 o'clock they're expired. If there's news coming out at 10.30, or if there's news coming out at 2 p.m., and you know your orders are going to expire, you can have your orders expire in six hours, and they can last from 6 a.m. to, if you drop them at 6 a.m., they're going to last until noon. So you can have six-hour slices, and you're planning both sides of the market. Always trade both sides, sell and buy. Now, easier said than done, if you, are, if you love to sell, or if you love to buy too much. So I think it be an objective view is the ultimate, right? This is going to be like a robot, trade like a robot as far as your decision shouldn't be. Uh, and the fundamentals, really, I wouldn't take that either. But on the long, like for real trading of making money and execution and in and out of the market trading, investing different, right? You're the you're the weekly chart saying, yeah, that Bitcoin sure looks ripe for a buy. Jesus fuck, came all the way back to the starting gate. Son of a bitch! Wow, look at one round trip on that. I heard this this Robert Kawasaki guy, who's this so-called real estate genius, who's just out of his mind. Yeah, gold's going to like three thousand out to in your fucking dreams. It's not going to happen. If capitalism comes back, gold's going to a thousand. I'm going to tell you right now. Mark my fucking words. In five years, gold will be at a thousand. I just try to get your head around that. And what will be expensive is nothing. There'll be deflation. I know. I can't. I know you can't believe it. There's going to be deflation. Some shit's gonna some shit's gonna be really like I said, microphones still a hundred bucks for a fucking microphone. But uh for my whole life uh, it's sort of got, it's not changed. I don't think they may, maybe they are now, right? I don't know. Finally. But this is ridiculous. Okay, now it's ten o'clock. So waiting for the ten o'clock. Looks like the buyers are coming in on this uh, euro, so I'm selling into the rally. Anyways, I think that people can't believe it, you know, because uh, surely the Bitcoin, they couldn't believe that. Oh, God, it's a fucking, wait, what's the 20 grand? I mean, I'm sure people's head exploded when it went to 20 grand. When it to 40 grand, people were like, wait a second. And then the pullback, just, just like the fucking, uh, a typical day in Forex, you know, up and down. And now we're all the way back to 15 grand. And it's that. So we loaded the wagon at 15 grand. Trying to get to 20 grand now.
25 grand sellers like crazy. Yeah, just got to wait for that to turn around. Always, I'm always trading reversals. So that's the other thing. No nonsense is a trend trader. Look for the bias, trade in one direction. I don't think I could ever do that. It's like, well, Jesus, what time frame then? This is time frame. This is irregardless of time frame in the sense that that low, if you go back to the low from, um, uh, it's, a, well, it's a low from like three and a half weeks ago or something like that, right? That's a structure issue. Um, <laughs> there's no time frame on that. It's just a place in time, somewhere in time on the chart. A specific point that wouldn't change. If you change the time frame, that would not change that the, the day that happened or the moment that reversal. So that's a unique situation. So it's based on that kind of entry, a fulfillment of the uh, kind of like the... Uh, I guess a lack of inventory. Old old prices that. Uh, oh, we got some of that. We got some leftover stuff way in the back of the warehouse there. And look at this. We found some balance here too. Look at right underneath all this money we printed off. Oh yeah, it's crazy. A couple of bitcoins fell out. Looks like we got some bitcoins here too. Oh geez, well then. Your diversified portfolio, you bet I am. Here we go. Getting a rally now. Come on, I want this thing to go to my settlements for God's sake. So I'm going to give it eight hours. So I'm selling into that uh, on the way. I'm going to sell heavy into that box tonight. And I got my buy limits down here for Europe open here. And this is going to be Europe open here. A big seller up there, big buyer down there. That's all there is to it. Bingo. Bingo, bango. It's going up. Sell, sell, sell. 